Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. My NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Apparently, people have a difficult time hearing me say my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Did I help you? I hope so. I don't blame you. I, I, I half the time don't listen to what people are saying either or understand what people are saying. I'm not making fun of you because I'm just like you. Talking about just like you, just like you, I don't have much time to do a lot of stuff. And uh, so I'm going to do a trade reaction video. And I'm not going to try to con convince you that I didn't know what all the trades were and all that stuff like that. But I will convince you quite easily that... I forgot most of what happened. So <laughs> I, I have the I have the memory of a gnat. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go through the trades. I'm going to go, oh, I don't like, I do like, whatever. I got, I got a little article here that goes through all of them. Way back to the Manson trade for Colorado. And then I'll go to every one of them. And we'll see how it goes. Sub yourself up because this is going to be fun. And you're going to want to see me do this a lot. Because I do this a lot. I'm going to be doing uh, playoff prediction videos. And I'm going to be doing some summer projection videos. Because I love the trades, don't you know? I just did a whole bunch of them. Check them out. I predicted Lindholm going to Boston. Predicted, sort of predicted, Giroux going to Florida. And uh, what did I? I did a whole lot of predictions. I don't think I got Manson to Colorado, though. But most of them I hit pretty good. So... Sub yourself up, be part of it. NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, you can also be part of that when you sub yourself up. I do a live show, semi-daily. Just wait. Just just stare at your YouTube until I show up. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at the trades. All right. I did this wrong, but that's okay. Okay going on here there we go see I told you it's right off the top of my head uh, actually you know what yeah here it is Manson traded to the avalanche by the ducks avalanche traded by the Manson and the ducks now do I like this trade Josh Manson just isn't what he used to be. I know everybody loves the Manson, and he's tough and all of those sort of things like that, but he ain't what he used to be. He's getting up there, and I love me some Joe Sackick, but this second-round pick in 2023 draft is steep. You're going to hear me say this a lot in this video. The 2023 draft is going to be pretty deep. And uh, Drew Hellison, I got to say, he was a second-round pick. They basically gave up two second-rounders for Manson. Now, if you want to know the, what kind of value that is, they gave up two second-rounders to the Islanders for Taves. Now, they weren't – and they and, and they weren't as, even as good at second-rounders as they are getting for Manson. Taze is a way better defenseman than Manson. He was when they made the trade. The Islanders were ridiculous for only getting that value for him, as far as I'm concerned. So I say this is an overpayment, but we're going to say this a lot. It was a seller's market this year. I don't mind it um, because Colorado's going for it, as you know. Um, and I got to trust Joe Sackick, really. That's what it comes down to in these things is you, sometimes you just got to trust the general manager that's making the trade. Uh, and, and Manson does bring the pain. Uh, they got him playing in the second pairing. His analytics don't show it, but we'll see what he does in Colorado. Um, right now, I'm saying that it was kind of an overpayment. But on the same note, I get it. I get going for this. There wasn't many defensemen out there this year, and he needed to do something to improve the defense to a certain extent because they have some injuries. They have Gerard that's injured, Bowen Byram. It was tough. He was in a bad spot. He overpaid a little bit. 
but I think it'll end up working out not too bad. Now, if Samuel Gerrard and Bowen Byram do happen to come back, as you can, he's going to be a 5, 6, or maybe even a 7, which is why I say that's a pretty steep price for him. But I get it. So I'm going to say that Anaheim did really well. They did really well for getting that much for Manson. And Colorado, I get the deal. So both sides win, but I'm going to give Anaheim the big win. I think they got a really good package for a defenseman that is really on the has been on the decline for a few years now. Minnesota Wild, I won't go too far into this, but Tyson Jost from the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for forward Nico Sturm. Uh, good move by the Wild. I, Jost has got a little more expensive of a contract, uh, but he's younger with more upside. And... He wasn't working out in Colorado. I wouldn't even doubt if he kind of whispered, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting a better shot somewhere because he's buried in the lineup in Colorado and his career starting to get to the point where it's like, I really wanted to be a top six forward and I'm not getting the chance here. So um, in Sturm, you're getting pretty much as what you got in Sturm. He's not going to be much better than he already is. So I'm going to give this to the Wild right now. Although I get, I understand the deal for the Avalanche. They do get a solid third-line player that doesn't make all that much money. Um, but I think the Wild may end up getting the better chance for the better player with Tyson Jost. All right, New York Rangers acquire Frank Vitrano from the Florida Panthers in exchange for the later selection of either the New York Rangers' fourth pick in 2022 draft or the Winnipeg Jets' fourth pick in the 2022 NHL draft. I love these ways. I love when teams do this because they show so much value in a fourth. There's a lot of players you can find with those fourth picks. There's a lot of players that are fourth round pick players in the NHL. So it is important to do that. Um, I love this for the Rangers though. Uh, uh, giving up a fourth for a guy like Vetrano, this might have something just I've always liked Vetrano, and he was buried, buried in Florida, uh, playing like fourth-line minutes a lot of the time. His shot is way too good to be playing down there. Um, and uh, what? F Florida is my home. He lives in Florida. Uh, oh, sorry. Florida was his home. He really loved it in Florida. That's what he was trying to say. But he gets a call out to the Rangers in He's going to head that way. Um, he's a right-hand shot. They needed a righty there. They've got a lot of left-hander, left, not left-handers, but left-wingers and Panarin and Lafreniere and, uh, of course, Kreider. They, and Kako is injured. So I thought this was a beautiful move for the Rangers in the sense that they didn't go over the top trying to go for it because they're pretty green going into this playoffs. Green, by that I mean young. And they don't have like a super shot to win the cup or anything. But to throw a fourth out there and you get a guy in Vitrano that I believe could be one of those guys, you know those players like Pisani for the Oilers back in the day that all of a sudden they just go off and everything goes in. Vitrano's one of those guys that I think could be just like that. He's got that type of a shot. Goes hard to the net. He doesn't mind mucking it up. He's not very good defensively, but he does all the things that a coach likes to see. So I really like this pickup by, by the Rangers. Next, Sherratt traded to the Panthers by the Canadians. And I don't like this deal for Florida. Um, I do follow analytics. I don't bring them up here because I find it bores people for the most part. Uh, and I usually rely on like young people that I know that do analytics and I was anti-analytics for not anti but it took me a while to warm up to them but I have to admit that they are a big part of the game now and they should be because they do tell you a lot and Ben Sherratt is poor defensively and not great offensively he's 30 years old okay whatever he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year they may be able to resign him however I wouldn't want to because he's going to get overpaid Ben Sherrod is big and causes pain, though, on the opposition. And uh, 
because of that, he does have value. Even a poor analytics player that is able to keep up to the game enough to hurt the opposition in a seven-game series, as far as physically speaking is concerned, has value. So I don't hate, hate, hate this trade, but they did give up a 2023 first-round pick, and that is just too much as far as I'm concerned. Those 2023 picks are going to be so valuable. This always happens with these big years that are coming up. It happened in 2015 as well. That the year before, general managers seem to let them go. And then as the draft comes up, nobody will let you even come close to them. Okay, so to get the 2023 for the Canadians for Sherratt, from a guy like Gorton, and yes, Gorton is the guy. Okay, I don't care about Hughes, whatever. He's going to be dealing with contracts. But Gordon is a guy. He is an analytics dude. And he knows that Sherratt defensively and offensively is not great. He is licking his lips on this deal. So I think Montreal wins the trade. But I get it for Florida in the sense that it really does matter that you create the pain that he does. One thing I got to say, although he is poor defensively, he is willing and able to block a lot of shots that he has to block because he spends a lot of the time in his, uh, his end of the rink, but he will do that. And that does boost up a team. There's a lot of things the analytics won't really tell you. And a guy like Sherratt can create better analytics for his teammates because he tires out the opposition. So I have really, had, as you can tell, I have a difficult time putting a value on a guy like Sherrod. Obviously, Florida puts an incredibly high value on it because they gave up an incredible amount, and especially if they don't re-sign them. So I think Montreal did really well, and I give it to Montreal. And I'm going to give it to a lot of the teams that got the picks in these plays here because it was a seller's market, and they did get a, a crap load back in return. As far as the... Uh, uh, Smolanich is probably a bottom six if he makes it in the NHL at all. It's not that great. It's this, and he, they do get a fourth out of it too. And we just talked about how the fourth, third, fourth, those rounds, there, there's a lot of players. You go look in the NHL, there's a lot of players in the NHL that were found in those rounds. So um, I thought it was a, lot, a really good value for him. Really good value for him. All right. Yarn Croc traded to the Flames by the Kraken. Now, I think Seattle did really well in this deal as well. Uh, they got a second rounder in 2022. Not the strongest draft this year. Uh, third round pick in 2023. And a seventh round pick in 2024. Um, it's, it's a steep price for Yarn Croc. But honestly, I, I really get it for Yarn Croc for what Calgary needs. There, he can play all over their lineup. They needed a guy that could fill some holes. And Yarncroft's a guy that can play center even. But he usually plays wing. He's extremely good defensively, and he can put up numbers. He's a guy that is very valuable in the playoffs. I think it was, it was hard to swallow giving up what they gave for a guy who's not really a top-line player. But it was the 2022 second, it's, which isn't as strong as... The 2023, the 2023 third, it's almost like giving up two seconds and a seventh. Steep? Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Almost a washer. I, I really like Yarn Croc a lot. I love his attitude. Uh, when he was with Nashville, he took a $2 million a year contract for eight years, basically saying that I want to do, I want to help this team at a, and um, I'm happy with you know being in Nashville, and I can live off two million dollars a year. He definitely sold himself short. He's got a I don't know. He's got that perfect attitude for a guy for any team. I think they'll probably re up him. I have a feeling he's going to love it in Calgary, especially if he loved it in Nashville because they're very similar. So I see them re upping him. I I I really understand how the Flames could give up a nice package for this. But I also think Seattle did really well. So I'm going to call this a wash. Uh, Hagel traded to the Lightning for the Blackhawks. And this was 
a really difficult one to uh, to say. Blackhawks receive forward Boris, Boris Kachuk, who's probably never going to be more than a fourth liner. Taylor Radish, who's got, I think, hidden offensive upside, but mostly played in the fourth line in Tampa Bay. Every once in a while was brought up. Interesting prospect. But here it is again, the first round pick in 2023 and the 2024 NHL draft. Huge, huge they gave up. Um, Hagel has got is 1.5 million for the next couple of years. It's a beautiful contract. He's a type of guy that everybody loves. He's uh, that uh, the coaches, players, fans, everybody loves Hagel. I talked to people from the Chicago boards in on Facebook and stuff, and they were like crying that they that he left. And I get it. I totally get it. Um. We were just talking about Calgary. He he projects to be like a Coleman type guy. And we know how much Coleman helped Tampa Bay win a cup before. If anybody is going to be, if a third line guy is going to have this much value, Hagel is probably the guy. But especially at his price point for the next couple of years at $1.5 million, I totally get it for Tampa Bay to basically just give up their lunch for Hagel here, which is what they did, though. I mean, the 2023 first, uh, and what was it? Top 10. Oh, they're top 10 protected. And the Lightning get back a fourth rounder. And the 2023 first. And the 2024 draft. Yeah, two first rounders. Man, that's a lot. When you think... Phil Kessel got two, th- two first-rounders. Now, that was with the Toronto team that was probably not going to be very good. This is going to be a later, possibly later first-rounders. You never know. Maybe Vasilevsky gets injured and all of a sudden Tampa's in the middle. It, it could happen. But that 23 draft, even in the 25-30 spot from what I get, from what I understand, there's going to be some really good players there. Probably Hagel level, and you get the 2024 as well. Now, if they whiffed on both, then of course, but I understand why Chicago had to bite the bullet here and take this deal. This was a lot to give for any, for a player that is really a third-line player. It's not like it's impossible to find as the player on the ice is concerned, but the price point, I think, is what what sells it here. Um, and my buddy... Uh, off the wall hockey, John from Off the Wall Hockey. I I read, I saw some stuff on him. He basically said Tampa still wins the deal even though they gave up that much. And people are going to say, well, if they win the cup, then then they win the deal. I I don't necessarily agree. Could they have won the cup without Hagel? Probably. That's the thing. They could probably have won the cup with Kachuk and uh, Radish, anyways. But I get it. It's tough to find a guy on that deal. So I'm going to say that Chicago wins the deal, but barely. Barely. I totally understand why they gave up so much for that. That was a long-winded way of saying that, wasn't it? Uh, Delorier traded to the Wild by the Ducks for for a third-round pick. Good value, again, from Anaheim for a guy who's a fourth-liner and he's older, third-rounder. Um while get tougher for the playoffs, I still think, like, this is all overpay, overpay, overpay this year. That's the thing. I think Anaheim did really well. Did really well getting a third for Delorier here. I give it to Anaheim. Give it to Anaheim. Boston acquire Han- Oh, this was unbelievable. I love me some Memphis. Lin- Lindholm. But, again, Anaheim, again, just pulls out the stops with the return here. Uh, what was it? More doesn't matter. Just made the money work. Back in nine in, and three draft picks. We'll look at what those pack picks were here in a second. What were the picks? Ah, first round pick in two thousand twenty-two. Second pick in two thousand twenty-three, and a second pick in two thousand twenty-four. That is beautiful. Lindholm isn't what he used to be, and he's still only 27, 28 years old. 
Um, but he is good enough for Boston. I just don't think Boston is doing the right thing here. Simple as that. I, I don't think so. I think this is a Boston team that when they go through a rebuild, it's going to just suck. And I, I'm not sure. They will may prove me wrong. We'll see. They might prove me wrong, but I'm not sure that they're going to be able to add enough to be able to compete with the Tampas and Carolinas with Bergeron getting older now and all of those sort of things like that. And that looks like what they're trying to do because to give up uh, the first round pick in 2022, it's a weaker draft, but you can still get a good player there. The second pick in 2023 is like getting a first in 2022. Two firsts, pretty much. A second round pick. And Euro Vekaninen, who was also a first round pick. That's like getting three fists first. And Vekaninen is looking really good, man. Awesome skating defenseman. I think Anaheim wins this hands down. Hands down. Especially if Vekaninen turns into what it looks like he's going to turn into, which is like maybe a Hannafin in Calgary, something like that. Maybe even better. His swift skating, oh, I, Anaheim destroyed in this deal. Destroyed. I loved uh, Lindholm. I love Lindholm. Boston got a really good player. But do I think this puts them over the top or anything like that? No. No, I don't. Tell me what you guys think out there. Do you guys think they got uh, hosed in that deal? Or you think Boston fans, do you think you got hosed in that deal? And by the way, sub yourself up. I do this kind of stuff all the time. So uh, you get to enjoy it every time. Everybody, sub up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's another one. Big one. Giroux traded to the Panthers by the Flyers for Tippett and a first-round pick. Florida, okay, for what Florida did with Sherratt, I think they did. They made up for it here. Uh, um this was a, was it 2022 first? I, I wish they would tell you that right off the top. Uh, tip it first round pick in 2024 or 2020. Okay, it's a late first. Yeah, I mean, you got to do that for Claude Giroux. Claude Giroux is one of the most underrated players of this generation. Uh, fantastic defensively, underrated defensively, doesn't get enough credit, can play center, can play wing, uh, might be able to resign him again. There's no condition here if he does resign. Tippett has got an amazing shot. I love the kid, but he's been buried in Florida. We'll see what he can do in Philadelphia, but this is a pretty weak return, and it's not really Philly's fault. Florida wins the trade. Philly did what they could because Giroux could go wherever he wanted to go, and I'm pretty sure Florida was where he wanted to go. What do you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans, of that return? Uh, hard for Giroux. Sub, sub yourself up so you can listen to this fine programming. Uh, Hag traded to the Panthers by the Sabres. I think this is what they should have did instead of going out and get Sherrod. I don't think Hag is that much that less of a player than Sherratt, to tell you the honest truth. That's why I think they overpaid for Sherratt. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. I'm going to send this out to the land. So, uh, Next, Ottawa Senators acquire defenseman Travis Hamannick for from the Vancouver Canucks and trade for a third-round pick. Seems heavy to me, again. Uh, Hamannick isn't bad, but he's fairly old. I guess they needed... Some veterans there because they don't really have young players that are going to be ready next year. It's okay. I don't mind the deal, but I don't think it's that great either. I'm not going to bother with that one. Uh, Canucks get Dermott in exchange for a third round pick. I don't think Dermott's worth a third. I'm not a big fan of Dermott. What do you guys think, Vancouver fans? Uh, we'll, we'll see what they turn him into. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing with Dermott, but I think he's at best a seventh defenseman and maybe never more much more than that. So what do you and then of course that made room for this deal, which I'm gonna get Toronto fans are gonna lose their mind when I say this. They got worked. They got worked. Seattle worked them all to crap here. Uh three draft picks for the defense for defensemen. 
uh, Mark Giordano, who is what, 37, 38 years old. Uh, they got second round pick in 2022, the second in 2023, again, that deep, deep, deep draft, and a third round pick in 2024 for a 38 year old Giordano who can play in your top four. I'll give you that. And I don't think, but I don't think makes them the contend a contender where you're like, let's put it this way. If Toronto doesn't make the playoffs this year, are you going to go, or doesn't make the playoffs? If Toronto, say, loses in the second round, are you going to say, good thing they got Giordano? Do you think it was any more chance that they win the cup with Giordano if, and if they don't? Like, significantly? Let's put it this way. Putting Giordano in, in, on Toronto's defense with their goaltending and situation that they're in, do you think they're going to beat Tampa Bay in the seventh game series, seven game series? What are the odds you think? 20%, 40%. Tell me what you think Toronto fans or anybody listening out there. What are the, do you, I, I, and then they got Colin Blackwell. Who's, who's good. I mean, he's good for a bottom four or whatever. Um, he's very underrated defensively. I do like the pickup of that. I just think they gave up way too much in this deal. I, I think that Dubas got caught up in the fact that, you know, Giordano and uh, – why do I forget his name? Brody. He's playing Calgary. Brody was going to really love it. It was like this reunion stuff. I could be proved wrong here. Maybe Giordano crushes it. And to tell you the honest truth, I hope he does. I hope he – I hope he's just amazing. He just goes off because I love him. I absolutely love him. I just have my doubts at his age that he's going to go off, off. He'll be good, but he won't be great. And I don't think it's enough to make Toronto a contender to give up as much as they did to get him. That, that's just what I think. It's calling it like I see it, boys and girls. Uh, Paul traded to the Lightning by the Senators for Matthew Joseph in a fourth. I give this to Ottawa all day long. You get a young player like Matthew Joseph and and a fourth-round pick for Paul, who I imagine Tampa Bay might be able to sign or whatever. But, I mean, he's not a spectacular player. He's older. He's a playoff-type guy, I think. And they, you know, they wanted another veteran because they really want to go for it right here. But I really like Matthew Joseph. I think Matthew Joseph's still got a lot of offensive upside. I love his energy. Um, I think I think Ottawa did really well. I'm giving it to Ottawa here. Uh, Nashville acquired defenseman Lauzon for a second round pick in 2022. I don't know. I'm going to give it to. I'm going to say Nashville knows what they're doing here because they do amazing things with defensemen. But what I've seen of Lauzon in Seattle. This is a massive overpay. Massive overpay. From what I've seen so far. But we'll see what Nashville does. But 2022, I mean, he really is not very good from what I can tell. However, like I said, Nashville has a tendency to take these players and make them something. So, uh, Winnipeg gets Appleton for a fourth. Love it. He was awesome in Winnipeg. Um down in that third line, he, I don't know. He had offense in Winnipeg. He was he was growing as a player and getting some offense in Winnipeg. Um, I love this deal for Winnipeg. I think it's. I, I think he didn't work out in Seattle for whatever reason. But there, sometimes you just mesh somewhere. So he's going back to Winnipeg again. I'm sure he's happy. They like they. I, from what I heard, he never wanted to leave. So now he gets to go back and and, and be happy to be there and. I don't know if you've heard, but not too many people are happy to go to Winnipeg. So I like the deal. Uh, Wedgwood from the Dallas Stars. Dallas didn't do much, but I thought this was fantastic. Uh, for the upside, poss- up, the upside possibilities with Wedgwood, he was great in Arizona. Now, it seems to be the Wedgwood has difficulties when put in positions of pressure. He had no pressure in Arizona, so we'll see what he does in Dallas now. He's got all the tools to be a great goaltender. And he's shown in Arizona that he could be. 
I think this is worth a shot for a fourth round pick uh, to possibly be a backup for Ottinger so they can move on from guys like Holtby and stuff like that that are expensive. Wedgwood won't be that expensive. And they need to sign some people in the offseason. I really like this move for Dallas. Uh, to, now we're getting to the free agent. Uh, Boyu by the Penguins. What did they give a seventh? That's all he deserves. Just a guy. Just a guy. He won't hardly play in Pittsburgh. So, um, Arizona picks up McBain from Minnesota. McBain was a college guy. He could go anywhere he wanted. And uh, he, he decided he wasn't going to go to Minnesota. So, so Arizona's given him a shot. And Minnesota picks up a second in 2022 for a guy that wasn't going to sign with them. Pretty darn good, if you ask me. And from what I understand, and maybe you guys can help me out here, he can sign with anybody still. So I'm not sure what they're doing in this deal. But maybe they know he's going to sign in Arizona first. Oh, you know what? Actually, I just heard they signed him already. So they good move, I guess, for both. I'll give them both. Uh, Johansson traded the Capitals by the Kraken. Uh, they got... They got Sprong, who is a speedy guy that just can't seem to fit in anywhere. He was in Pittsburgh, now Anaheim, now Washington, and now he's going to try in Seattle. He just can't seem to get his whole game figured out, but I think it's worth the shot for Seattle. For Marcus Johansson, who basically is just a journeyman anyways, and a fourth-round pick. Um wasn't working out. I think they both did well here. Johansson is that guy that can plug all over your lineup. He's he's got he's got his playoff uh, experience. He can put up some offense. You know, he's not bad. Not a bad move by Washington. I like him. I like it for both. Uh, okay, Little and Smith traded to the Coyotes by the Jets, so they so the Winnipeg Jets can free up uh, cap space for the summer. It's basically what that was, uh, and they get. And Nathan Smith is a college kid who, from what I understand, might be a, like a third, fourth liner, but it's a prospect in a fourth just to take some cap space. And not only that, Arizona can hit, can make their floor the deep, smaller, meaning their cap floor. So with Smith in there, uh, they don't have to pay actual dollars. It's mostly insurance money, not Smith, uh, Little. Little's on long-term injury reserve. And I believe that's still paid out by the Coyotes, but it goes on the Arizona cap. And for a team that is going to have a 5,000-person stadium for the next couple of years, they need to be below the cap floor to make so they're not losing too much. You know, losing as less money as possible. Uh, not going to do that one. Kakinen traded the Sharks by Middleton. Now, everybody has a big thing for Middleton. I'm not sold here. I think San Jose did well getting Kakinen here. I like Kakinen's upside. At, uh, I think he's 26, 27 years old. Uh, let's take a look at that. But he's, he's a late-blooming defenseman that I believe is just getting better and better. Uh, fifth round pick in two. The Sharks also get a fifth round pick in the 2022 draft. Um, yeah, 25 years old. See, he's 25 years old. He just keeps better, getting better and better every year. I think by the time he's 27, 28, he could even be a number one goaltender. I think San Jose did well here. Middleton is a good, tough guy. Uh, they're trying to, you know, they're hoping he can be like a guy like Boriaki in Nashville or something like that. Which, if he makes that. It's a really good deal, but I think he's just a little overvalued. He was playing on a really weak defense in San Jose, got a lot of minutes. I'm not sure it was great. However, the person making this decision was Bill Guerin, and I have a lot of respect for his uh, for his uh, uh, evaluation of players. So I could be missing something here, but I think San Jose won the deal. Flurry traded to the Wild by the Blackhawks as the next deal and a conditional first round draft pick, a second round pick. Uh, Wild, amazing. Got the day, pretty much. This is the trade of the day. If the Wild have any chance to win a cup this year, they needed to do this deal. 
And that could be the same for Edmonton and Toronto. And I probably they phoned for Flurry, and he got convinced by Garen that Minnesota was a place. I heard in an interview that Flurry said, you know, it's really close to Chicago, so he can still see his family. It was just a perfect spot for him. Minnesota becomes a contenderish player, at least into the second tier of contenders with Flurry there, because you just never know when you got a Flurry in your. In your goal tonight, he was a Vezina Trophy winner last year. You don't think he can't go off in the playoffs this year? Minnesota kicked ass in that deal. I don't care about the Viega trade. Uh, Braun traded to the Rangers by the Flyers. I think the Flyers did well getting a third for Braun. He's a 5'6 guy. In the 2023 draft yet. I also get it for the Rangers. They need some veteran. But this is the thing. The Rangers gave up thirds and fourths. For like Vetrano and Braun. They didn't go off, but they put themselves in a better situation. They're in the just-in-case area of making the playoffs. You never know. You know people say that? Once you make it, you never know. And you don't. Look at Montreal. Price went off. Shesterkin goes right out of his freaking mind. And the Rangers, you never know. And getting guys like Braun and Vetrano and stuff puts you even in a better you-never-know place and I really think they did a good job not giving up too much off the roster or in prospects to make themselves a little better when behind the scenes I really think the Rangers know that they're not really in it in it for another year or two but nice move uh, Brown traded to the Bruins for submission I will talk about this a little bit Sinitian's going to Brusque is probably going to be gone. We all know about the 2015 draft where they had three first round draft picks. By the way, all this 2023 stuff, all oh, everybody sub up. By the way, we're going to be doing this stuff a lot, so sub yourself up. That we, I, I keep on mentioning the value of these picks in the 2023 draft, it's compared to the 2015 draft that Boston almost completely whiffed on. And this was one they had three picks. In the first round, right around between 12 and 15, I believe. 12, 13, and 14, or 13, 14, 15, something like that. They could have had Barzal, Shabbat. Yeah, it's well documented. Connor from Winnipeg. But instead, they got Sinitian, DeBrusque, and the other guy. <laughs> I always forget his name, who's injured right now. Uh, <laughs> defenseman. It might come to me, it might not. It doesn't matter. And now they trade Sinition for Brown, a tough defenseman that can't keep up to the play. Ouch. I think Ottawa wins this deal. Because when I've seen Sinition play, yeah, he's not going to be a top six guy. But I don't think he's a bad bottom six guy. He's got a decent shot. I think he could end up making him look stupid here. Ottawa wins the deal. Boston loses again in that 2015 draft. And this one here, oh my God, what was this all about? St. Louis Blues acquired Nick Letty and Luke Witkowski in exchange for Jake Wallman, who probably is going to be a career minor leader. Forget about that. Oscar Sundquist, if he's healthy, they already won the deal before we even go on. Letty and Witkowski is nothing, is less than nothing. Letty's horrible. Letty is really bad, for especially at his price point. And they get a second in that 2023 draft I was just talking about. That's deeper, deep as hell. This was Stevie Eisenman of the Detroit Red Wings absolutely leveled this trade. Insane. This, I, I think as far as value is concerned, where you give up basically less than nothing, and get a second-round pick in one of the deepest drafts. Oscar Lundqvist, which I'm going to kind of not, if he can be healthy. If he can get healthy, he's got the heart, of unbelievable heart. Sidney Crosby, when he played in Pittsburgh, said that Sundquist was his favorite player. There you go. They crushed it. Detroit Red Wings absolutely crushed this deal. Uh, next. Uh, Colorado Avalanche get uh, Aturi Lekkinen. I love Lekkinen. I think this is uh, – but the exchange, Justin Barron is a very, very good defenseman in the second-round pick in 2024. Barron is probably 
buried in Colorado with all the defensemen they have. But I'll tell you this right now. I think I think right now, in the end, Montreal will win this deal. Justin Barron could be a top, solid, solid, solid top four defenseman. And I think will be a definite NHL player. Uh, we'll see what the second round t- turns into. But for now, Colorado getting Lekkonen to add into that core of players, forwards that they have right there. Two-way guy like him, plays his heart out every night, can score, can play all over your lineup. Again, kind of like Yarncroc out there. It was a tough pill to swallow for Colorado, but it's a pill that I probably would have swallowed as well. It, it was tough. It was a tough trade. But... I mean, I think even Montreal was like, because they, Kalekin is a fairly young guy. He's not that old. Uh, what is, I should tell you here. I think he's like 25, 26. Yeah. So, I mean, I think they could, would have really liked to keep him, but Colorado gave him an offer they couldn't refuse. And I don't think I could have refused it either as much as they, because they're supposed to be rebuilding. And uh, I love Barron. You just love Barron too much. In the long run, for what Montreal is doing, not only that, Justin Barron's in the AHL right now. He's not far from NHL ready. Great pickup for Montreal. Uh, Hammond traded to the Devils, doesn't matter. Larson traded to the Capitals, whatever. Uh, Rangers, that doesn't matter. Lightning, Nash, nice little move. Getting Nash, good defensive center if they have injuries or whatever. And uh, this one is, we'll go up to here to the cop, to the ra- to the Rangers by the Jets for three picks. Nice uh, return for, for the Jets for a guy that it didn't look like they were going to sign. Uh, what was it? Uh, two conditional second round picks in the 2022 and 23 NHL draft. And you know what I'm saying about, I've said it enough at the 2023 NHL draft. By the way, Winnipeg fans or whoever else is listening out there, sub yourself up so you can be part of this fine frolic all the time. Um, but I get it for the Rangers too. I They are going to re-sign Cop, And this gives them an opportunity, and I think they're going to give him an eight-year deal, probably in the $5 million range. Cop is a guy who can play everywhere in your lineup. You can play him at center, wing. He's only 27. He's had 35 points in 56 games. Just like Yarncroc we just talked about and Lekkonen we just talked about, maybe even more so, this guy can do it all. He's cheaper than some of the guys that they already have, like like uh, Strom. So I get what they did. I just, that 2023 draft can come back and burn you. But in this case, in order to secure that you get a guy like Andrew Kopp, I think it's a good deal. And I think that the Jets did pretty well getting a guy that they weren't going to be able to sign some pretty darn good picks. So I'm going to call that a wash. Uh, Kulak traded to the Oilers by the Canadians for a second. I think it was a good move. Uh, it's the 2020 draft, 22 draft. Kulak is a very underrated defensive defenseman, and the Oilers needed a defensive defenseman. Plays on the left side, which is what they needed. I like the deal. It's maybe a little bit of an overpayment, but it was a seller's market and they needed it. I think they're going to be able to resign him because he's from Stony Plain, Alberta. So especially if they're able to resign him and he's able to be a long-term cog in the Oilers that have a difficult time finding defensemen, finding players to play in Edmonton, it's a good deal, I think, by both. Montreal getting a second. Kulak wasn't going to help them out much for what they're doing, so it was a good deal for both. Raquel traded the Penguins for Aston Reese, Simone, and a second-round pick in 2022. I think as long as the Pittsburgh Penguins are able to re-sign Raquel, and I have a feeling they would, that they will be able to because there's some guys going to be coming off the books, a lot of guys coming off the books for the Pittsburgh Penguins this year. I thought they did well. Zach Aston Reese was a tough pill to swallow for them. They really love him. Simone is whatever and a second round pick. Out of what a lot of other teams gave up in this draft, I would say Pittsburgh, because of the market, 
was a buyer's market, did fantastic in this deal as long as they can re-sign them. Even if you don't, because they're in a situation where they, they're in a win now situation. So, and Rick Raquel helps them out with the fact that Kapanen hasn't been doing crap in Pittsburgh. So I kind of like the move for the Ducks, but I don't, I'm surprised they couldn't get more value than that. Honestly. We'll see how Aston Reese turns out in Anaheim. I mean, I know he's a great defensive player, but he doesn't provide that much offense. So they could end up getting virtually nothing in that deal. I like it for Pittsburgh. Uh, Sanford traded to the Jets. I like that little move. Uh, fifth round pick, why not? Get a tough kid. Sanford could play in your bottom. Not a bad deal at all. I thought the Jets did pretty well. Whoops. Broussard, okay, Broussard traded to the Oilers. Meh, fourth round pick. Not a big Broussard guy. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, Nemeshnikov, not a big Nemeshnikov either. They only gave up a four, so it's okay. It gives them a little bit of offense. Does it make them better? Kind of. The Red Wings get a fourth for Nemeshnikov. That's that's good. Not, not, not a stupendous trade or anything like that. Uh, Mott traded to the Rangers for fourth. I like that pick. Again, I liked everything the Rangers did. They gave up fourth and thirds and added heart and soul guys just to basically outwork the opposition in the playoffs. They just might be able to get away with doing that. And getting guys like Mott, Petrano, you know, that those and Braun gives them an opportunity to possibly have all of those guys are known for those things. I thought it was a good move. I thought the Rangers had a really good, really good day. Yeah, a really good week, couple weeks, actually. Carpenter traded to the Flames. Decent move. Fifth round pick. Fourth line center. Just a depth pickup. Uh, Kraken gets the Rask. That was more of a cap thing. Domi traded to the Hurricanes for the um, in a three-team deal. Now, this one, I never did see what this three-team deal was. So you're actually getting a reaction here. Domi was traded to Carolina on a three-team deal involving Columbus Blue Jackets in the Florida. The Hurricanes received defense prospect Tyler Imamoto. Never heard of him. That's probably not a good thing. Defenseman Aiden Hureshik. I have no idea. I've got Carolina fans who don't know who he is. Uh, and the uh, Panthers received Igor Korshkov and a sixth-round pick in the 2022 draft. Does he's in the final year? So Carolina didn't. There was no retained money here. Now this is what I'll say about this deal. I know Carolina fans were like, "I can't believe they got Domi. He comes off as a snot no kid because he was in Arizona. He went to he got jettisoned out of Mon Mon Montreal, and then now out of Columbus as well." All I got to say about this deal is this. And I, I agree with you. He could be just a brat, and I don't know why they would do this deal for $5 million. But he played with Kokaniemi in Montreal. He played with Stepan in, for Arizona. And I believe Ranta as well in Arizona. And I believe um, Martinuk. So they would have had four guys to go to to say, what should we do with this kid? Should we give him a shot? think you can straighten them out and they must have been like yeah we'll do it we can do it he's got all the talent we'll do it he's got the talent well we they're gonna find them the magic elixir to get Domi focused and being whatever it is and not being whatever it is that he is that have created seemingly created problems in every organization he's been in Give them that. They already did it with D'Angelo. Nobody's complaining about that contract now, right? So why can't they do it with Domi? I'm going to give them a mulligan here and say that they're able to do it. They they have a chance to do it. I get it. I was just really surprised by it like everybody else. All right, that's my full 42. Man, that video was long. Uh, but I knew it was going to be because it was a draft. And uh, I'm going to go send this out to all the lands now. And I'm going to do my show. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.